what the woman says next means customs are now highly suspicious. Someone stuck something in one of those bags while I was doing yoga stretches down the back of the plane. Auckland International Airport processes more than 7 million passengers each year. One of the many handler dog teams who help keep the border safe are Chad in India. Come. Fine. Today's stream of new arrivals are off a London-Hong Kong flight. Like Phil Collins, India suspects there's something in the air tonight. And against all odds, she's attracted to this woman. But you can't hurry, love. You just have to wait. Do you want to put a smell on my bag? Oh, this is a drug dog. Oh, it's a drug dog? Yeah, she's a drug dog, so... Oh. Do you have any well, drugs then, on you today? No, I don't. Okay. don't. That's fine. Um, I'll just... I have lollies. I thought it was smelling yeah. my Haribo lollies. Okay. What we'll do is we'll just, um, because she's shown a bit of interest, we'll just, yeah. uh, um... Have a look at my shit? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Just ask you a couple of questions and have a quick look. No worries. Other customs staff take the woman to the red zone, while Chad and India continue to see if anyone else is interesting. Just let her know we'd be taking her in for a little bit of questioning and have a look through her bags. Customs officer Matt is keen to figure out why India selected this woman so surely. You said you tried drugs. What have you tried? What have you taken? In the past? Yeah. Oh. Everything. Everything? Yeah. When was the last time you took drugs? Oh, months ago. Okay. So can you give me any explanation for why the dog may have indicated? No. No? I thought the dog was fruit dog and was probably out of the sweets that are in there. I mean, that was the only thing that I could think of. Okay, and when he stopped. said it was a drug dog, obviously I was a bit surprised about that yeah. and went, oh. Even if she was a fruit dog, India hasn't got a sweet tooth. She's trained to seek out naughty lollies. I'm not guessing that the dog is wrong, but I also can't give you any valid reason why. India's insightful indication, along with what the woman says next, means customs are now highly suspicious. Someone stuck something in one of those bags while I was doing yoga stretches down the back of the plane. She says she has nothing on her today. When quizzed more by Matt, she does admit to one breach of the rules. OK, so can we have a discussion? Yeah. OK, so in that bag, there's cigarettes. Yep. And many, in that bag, many, there's cigarettes. How many do you have? Oh, I don't know. There's whatever I brought back from Indonesia when I went for Jack French, so maybe nine packets of cigarettes in there. OK. Yep. But so am I going to have to pay customs on them? Because I already bought them duty-free at other times. You're allowed to bring 200 over duty-free over the border. Yeah. And then everything in, in addition to that you need Pay duty and wow. I never knew that. Excess cigarettes are one thing, but that still doesn't explain why India made such a clear indication, which arouses concern she may have illegal drugs concealed in her bags. And now you get to see my lollies. They're all squished. Oh dear. Well, it's the thought that counts, you know? It is, yeah. <laughs> That's what all people are going to get. With nowhere else to go, the woman fills in her time by entertaining Matt, who she renames Nigel, giving him a running commentary of everything that's come out of her bag. I can call you Nigel if I want. Yeah. Does that make you feel a bit like a hooker, though? You know, yeah. like, as long as, as long as you're paying, you can call me anything you yeah. like. Nigel or not, this charming lady is taking a very long route out of the airport. Sorry, Nigel. <laughs> Her empty bags are run through the x-ray machine, but this reveals nothing hidden in the lining. By and large, everything's pretty satisfactory at this stage. Eventually, it's decided that once she's paid duty on her cigarettes, the woman can leave, although for now, maybe it's best to leave her alone. The only thing she had on her today was... Uh that she shouldn't have was some cigarettes, which she had to pay $300 for. It's highly likely that her bag was in contact with illegal drugs over in, uh, in, in London. But well done to India for uh, managing to pick up on the, the odour. It's a great job by, by Indy. Hey, bud. Oh, good job by you. Hey. Ministry for Primary Industries dogs are also checking new arrivals today. They are protecting our biosecurity by sniffing out undeclared risk items. Good boy. Let's go. Thanks. Thank you. Beagle Max is one of MPI's senior sniffer dogs, and his highly experienced nose is almost impossible to fool. Indicating on this woman's bag brings Max's handler Becky rushing to check her out. Do you have any food in here? The woman who is a tour guide says no, but Max is saying yes. Have any fresh fruit or meat? I forgot. Oh, good boy. Inside the tour guide leader's bag are three pieces of fruit, exactly what the signs are warning against. She is taken aside. 
Just wait here for a second, yes. okay? I, I forgot. I, I forgot it, and uh, I just the wall always. Okay. The, All right. This okay. Time, okay. Just just wait here. Yeah. Okay. And my colleague will come and help you. Okay, Max. The tour leader goes on a guided trip to the enforcement desk, where staff know their way round a rule book. MPI officer Demi reads her the riot act. So you should know better because you're the tour leader. Yeah, I'm so sorry. Yeah, you always come to and fro. Yeah. Is this yours? Yeah, I Memory loss is a reason, but not an excuse when it comes to New Zealand's valuable horticultural industry. The tour guide gets a four hundred dollar fine. Oh, no, yeah. please, no. you just wait. Uh, I'll just uh, process this. You just sit down there and relax, okay? The onus is on the traveller to know what's in their bags and to declare or dispose of risk items. So this is a very good, uh, very expensive uh, lesson for you. So next time when you come into New Zealand, always uh, remember to declare anything. Having paid her fine, the tour guide can return to her tour group and Max can return to his checks. <laughs> good boy. Very good indication. A busy night is getting busier for Wellington Delta dog team Paul and Epic. After finding three teens stealing petrol, another job's come up. It could be hazardous for man and dog. Just got reports of a male with an axe, axe handle walking down the road, looking a bit intimidating, so we'll uh, see if Epic can get hold of that axe. More bad guys to chase. Epic can hardly believe his luck tonight. Paul soon spots two men with an axe handle. Even without the head, it's still a lethal weapon. Put the axe stick down, mate. Just drop that. Epic gives them an indication of what's to come if they don't comply. Just go against the fence. Over there. How come you're carrying that stick? Because no, the street's been shifty as lately. And these streets aren't going to get less shifty if people insist on carrying weapons of protection when they walk home. Paul decides a little education is called for. Well, you can't carry a stick like this around the street, can you? It's a weapon. Fair enough. I haven't been using it as one. No, but you still can't carry it around. It's yeah. positioned on a fence of weapon. It's actually in a fence. All right. Well, we'll just grab your details. As backup arrives, Paul quizzes the men on who they are and why they're here. You're bigger than me. I'm 16, like no shit. Oh, yeah? Maybe a big boy like this should take up a hobby. Well, yeah, he's a pretty big 16-year-old. He should be out playing league instead of wandering around at 1 o'clock in the morning. Oh, yeah, I wouldn't want to be hit around the head with this, so don't really want people carrying it on the streets. So it'll be obviously confiscated. The boys are sent home empty-handed, just the way normal people like it. Probably a bit naive about the laws about carrying weapons like this around the street. It's, it's a big no-no. And he's got it for the sole purpose of protection. And uh, we certainly don't encourage that. We don't want it in our communities. Epic was not needed this time. So with downtown downtime, Paul takes him out for some early morning exercise.